In this tutorial, we're actually going to use the attack animation and we're going to show how to script the collider event so that when we hit something, it will register. So let's go ahead and close our editor here, switch over to our Fauna Develop. In the start, we're going to use our Knight. We're going to register a collider trigger delegate. And what that's going to do is every time there's a trigger hit, it's going to fire the event or the function that we tell it to. Now, if this had been a collision instead of a, a tr trigger, we'd do a register collider collision delegate. Uh, but I made this a trigger, so we're going to use this function. And we're going to create a function, so we'll call it uh, sword hit. Now we need to create that function. We're going to use a collider trigger event as the parameter. So whenever the sword hits something, because we've registered this function, it's going to call this function with the parameter of trigger event. Now the trigger event holds the information of what happened. So we can use that information. Say trigger event bone name. weapon. That way we can distinguish, uh, we might have other colliders and we only want this event to use the weapon uh, event. There's other parameters we can use. There's bone name, the bone node index, that's the index of the bone uh, in the listing of the hierarchy, uh, starting at zero for the root and then moving down. So if you want to reference by the index, you can um, get what the other collider was if you want to find the name of it. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that exactly because we, you can use collision or the layers to filter out unwanted collisions. The trigger type we do want because if we don't put the trigger type in, it's going to fire for the, the entering of the trigger, for the continuing existence of the colliders, the um, yeah, colliders touching, and then the exit, which we only want the enter. Otherwise, you'd have a whole bunch of events firing. So let's go ahead and change this type to enter only. Now, if this happens, for now, we don't really have anything we can do. So we're just going to put up a debug log sword hit. OK, so now when the sword actually hits, it'll fire this event. And if it's the weapon and it was an enter event, it's going to write out to the event viewer that the sword hit. So let's save this. Now for this to actually work, we need to have another collider for it to interact with. So let's go to our target and let's add a collider. Let's go to component, physics. Let's make it a capsule. That looks like it'll fit a little better. So you can see, created a collider around the uh, target. We wanna make this a trigger because these are two triggers interacting. Uh, this sword, actually, it'll put a rigid body on the sword, so we don't need a rigid body here. Uh, since we're using triggers against each other, one of these objects has to have a rigid body. I go ahead and just add the rigid body to the sword so that you don't have to worry about putting a rigid body on your other objects. Uh, let's go ahead and update this knight just so I can show you that rigid body. If you hit run or play, it will go ahead and update it, but uh, since I want to show you this in real time, or in design time, I have to do it that way. So let's go to the arm left, hand left, weapon. You can see over here, since we added that collider, it put a rigid body on there, and it put a box collider. And it's disabled right now because it only enables itself on the downswing, just like we told it to. So those are already in existence in our night. And again, don't shouldn't modify these in design time because anytime you make a change, it's going to wipe out this whole structure and rebuild it. So these will go away and come back. So anything you add here will get wiped out. So now we have our target with a collider on it. And we might want to move our target a little bit closer so we're guaranteed to hit it. And our knight has the scripting set up for the bone. So we should get a hit whenever, should write to the debug log. Every hit. So let's go ahead and hit play. Wow. 
one thing I forgot to do is attach code to actually make him attack. So let's go ahead and do that. Make this the A key for attack. And we're not going to crossfade this since it's playing on top of other animations. It's just going to take over. So we're going to just play it. And in other tutorials, we set it up to use mixing. So it's going to play on top of the stand or the walk. So it should just get all the weight no matter what else is playing below it. I think that's all we need to do. So let's save that and go back. Now let's play. Now if I hit the A key, he attacks, and when the sword hits, it fires off our trigger. You can see that in the scene. Let's do a split view here. It's going to be quick, so watch the sword. Actually, I have to highlight the knife. Okay, so watch the sword. You can see it just turn on real quick, and that's when it hits. And you can see the sword's actually touching the collider here but it's not firing any events that's because we turned off the collider in our animation so that's that's why we did that so it only hits when we hit play or when we play our animation and you can see it, it's playing on top of the stand if we were to walk and attack he walks as he's attacking walk backwards attack stand attack so he's doing all that because of mixing. So we've added mixing, we've added collisions, and you can see the texture changes too. The sword changes to a swishing motion when I attack. So the attack animation has a lot of meat in it. And I think that's all we need to do for this tutorial.